Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Do, Polaris Terrain Domination, and by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. I've ridden in Quebec dozens of times now throughout the years since I was a little kid, you know, until just this past season. I love riding in this area because Quebec offers a unique experience you can't get anywhere else. For this trip, we're going to be covering two separate regions in Quebec, Centre du Quebec and Chaudier Appalaches. Uh, for Centre du Quebec, we're going to be staying at uh, kind of a lodge hotel type place uh, called Manoir du Lac William. And when we travel over to Chaudier Appalache, we're going to be staying at the Appalache Resort and Spa. For this trip, I've got somebody joining me who I've grown up my whole life with, my cousin Mike. And uh, he's my business partner. He's my cousin, but he's also a very good friend of mine. And Mike's been to Quebec many times before with Supertracks Magazine. I've been coming to Quebec just about every year for the past 20 years. I've traveled just about every region across the province. This particular trip to Quebec is a little bit different than others because I get to travel with my cousin and it's really actually sad that we don't get to travel together more often. You know, I've stayed at a lot of different places in Quebec. I've stayed at some that are super high end and make you feel uncomfortable and I've stayed at some that are very mom and pops and, and they really cater to snowmobiles well. Manoir du Lac William is both. Uh, it, it's a super high end lodge hotel type atmosphere, but man, they're really happy to have snowmobilers um, traipsing about in their boots and their helmets. The goal for our first day of riding was to find this great big bridge. It, there's quite a spectacular bridge in the region that uh, spans a, a great big river and it's built specifically for snowmobiles and recreationalists and it's quite quite a landmark so we wanted to get to the bridge check it out see what all the fuss was about and figured on our way there and back we'd have a good ride either way the first part of day one we saw such a wide variety of trails uh, there were wide open vistas that we traveled across edges of farmers fields tight twisties and then tree line straightaways it was just beautiful we managed to come across this one spot, a beautiful lookout on the side of a farmer's field on the side of a hill that you could see a long way through all these rolling hills, more farmer's fields and stuff. It was really a pretty place to, to stop partway through the ride, have a look around and uh, then get back on our way. The scenery that was in front of us was simply amazing. We got off our sleds and just, it was nice to take a second to, to take it all in and, and just enjoy what we were seeing. There are a few things about riding in Quebec that never disappoint. One is the trails, they're always great. Two is the food, you always eat well. And three is signage. Everywhere I go in Quebec, the signage is impeccable. Uh, on a self-guided tour like this one, it's really important that the signs be accurate and plentiful. And in this area, they were. Centre du Quebec has done an excellent job with all of their intersections being signed. You know, like on any snowmobile journey, you come to a lot of crossroads and a lot of tees and we found the signage to just be spectacular in this area. I think the thing that sets the Centre du Quebec region apart as a place that I would recommend other people come and visit is the diversity of trails um, from farmers fields to tight bush areas to you know wider open kind of bush roads. It really does offer a little bit of everything. Uh, the scenery here is certainly excellent. The bridge that we've come across is really a spectacular piece of construction. I mean, when I think about the fact that this bridge was built specifically for recreationalists like snowmobilers, like us, it really gives you uh, a graphic example of how dedicated to this sport the regions of Quebec are.
you know, at the end of the day, at the end of ride day one, um, I looked back on the on the ride and I thought to myself, everything came about just right for this ride. I mean, we had the great scenery, we had the great trails, we had great food. But the thing that really made this part of the trip fun was uh, great friends, great great people to, to ride with. And being able to ride with Mike, I've known him my whole life, he's my cousin, uh, it was a different experience. We haven't been able to ride like this before where we were on an adventure together and, and it was a bit of an adventure and we had a lot of fun and it definitely changes the sport of snowmobiling when you can ride with people that you really enjoy riding with. We really did have a good time riding in the Centre du Quebec region, but this story was about more than just this region. We had a whole nother section of Quebec to ride the next day. And Mike and I, after a ride day like this one, were just bristling with excitement to see what the next day had in store. Snow Tracks is sponsored by snowmobileinquebec.com. This winter, experience snowmobile heaven. Ride day number two started at a very unique place called Appalache Resort and Spa. Uh, this place really caters to a wide range of outdoor recreationalists. They have dogs sledding and they have all kinds of things to do. Obviously, the snowmobile trail is groomed right through the middle of the place, so we parked our sleds outside our cabin. And in the morning when we woke up, we put our gear on, uh, trekked outside, hit a groomed trail, and didn't hit a bump the entire day. I think the thing I'm looking forward to most about the Chaudier Appalache region and riding here on this portion of the trip is that I know the trails are, are wider, I know they're faster than, than our previous day's ride. Mike knows this area, he's ridden here a couple times, so he knows the area and, and, and is going to get us to the best spots. I absolutely love riding in Chaudier Appalache. I always have a good time when I'm here. The trails are freshly groomed. They're wide, they're windy, they're tree-lined. There's a variety of hills. You can climb into the mountains, down into valleys. It's amazing. Mike actually provided today's riding goal or destination. Uh, he knew of this lookout spot. I've been to the Chaudier Appalachian region several times, and I knew of this really cool spot that I wanted to take my cousin. So we rode the sleds to the top of Mont Saint Magloire to this amazing lookout tower. When we got up on top of that mountain and we took the little bush trail off of the main trail, I thought, okay, this is getting this is getting pretty tight. And then that trail, you just started climbing. And it was like almost riding in the mountains at some points. The snow was deep. It's not a groomed portion of trail. So it was pretty, uh, pretty extreme up in there. The reason I love this spot so much is because you climb so high on the sleds up into the mountain. You know, you're getting glimpses here and there of, of the scenic vistas, but it nothing compares to once you climb to the top of the scenic lookout tower. Mike had talked this lookout up like nobody's business. Uh, he made it sound like this was the most impressive destination ever seen by snowmobilers ever. And when you pull up to the actual tower itself, it's pretty high and it's well maintained. And I could already tell when we were looking at the tower that by the time I got up there, there was gonna be no obstruction. I, could, I was gonna be able to see as far as the eye could see and get a real good picture of what this region looks like above the tree line. <laughs> cool. Crazy. You can see forever. It's amazing. You know, the whole ride into Quebec, I'd been talking Luke's ear off about this tower and he was probably ready to kill me. And quite honestly, I was really hoping that the scenery would be clear because I really wanted him to get the full glimpse of everything that it had to offer. But when he first stepped onto the tower, I, I think he was impressed. I, I think it really took his breath away. After we were done at the tower, uh, we basically had, had accomplished our goal. Mike had accomplished his goal. He got us there unscathed. 
on the way down, you get a different perspective than on the way up to a place like this because you are looking out over the spots that you're traveling to as opposed to looking up at where you're headed. And you start to realize you're, you're not just up a hill, you are actually on the side of a mountain. And, and it just takes your breath away, you know? It, I'm, usually I can ride fast on a trail, but I was intentionally slowing it down just so I could see everything. The most interesting part about it was at one point, we came around a corner and all of a sudden, right there in front of you is this great big wind farm with all these windmills. They were out in the middle of nowhere. Literally, we were in the middle of nowhere and there was these humongous windmills just sitting on the side of this hill, spinning away. These last couple of days were amazing. Every time I come to Quebec, it's, it's just a great experience. The people are friendly, the food and accommodations are always spectacular, and the trails are phenomenal. And if you disagree with me, clearly you haven't ridden here. I've never come away from a trip to Quebec thinking, wow, I didn't really have any fun doing that. But this trip to Quebec was special and, and it was more fun than I've had here, I think ever before. Mike and I really had a good time together outside of work, outside of the office, just playing and having some fun. We got to see some really cool places. We experienced some different culture. We ate some incredible food, stayed at really nice places. It was, a, it was just a whole experience all the good stuff that you'd want in a great snowmobile trip wrapped up into one tight package. And I would recommend anybody come back here anytime. It, it's a great, great opportunity to experience snowmobiling uh, all in one place. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, the cornerstone of every adventure. There's this theory that gets talked about a lot around the Snow Tracks World Headquarters. It's something we joke about and something we always try to avoid ourselves, but it's a universal theory that applies to everyone at some point, including us. We call it compound ignorance. In simpler terms, it's the state of not knowing that you didn't know. As hard as we try to predict the future around here, once in a while a sled comes along that we didn't even think to want. The Renegade XRS is one of those sleds. When I think about the concept, it makes so much sense it's annoying. We love the XRS package and we love the Renegade. Why didn't we think to suggest the two be combined? Good thing for all of us, Skidoo has big minds thinking up great ideas day in and day out. It's hard not to oversimplify this sled because the concept itself is so simple. Take the XRS package with its ultra high-end shocks race-inspired ergonomics and replica good looks, and add a 137-inch skid that provides increased traction, more stable handling, and even better ride quality than its 120-inch counterpart. Simple, yes, but history is chock full of examples where combining two great ideas did not result in a superior product. Is the Renegade XRS just another spork? At its core, this sled is based on the ultra-popular and well-established XS-RS chassis and bodywork. Skidoo set a whole new standard with this sled, and it has continued to define precision handling ever since. The most rider-forward seating position, nearly perfect mass centralization, and an incredibly low center of gravity are the cornerstones of any XS. But this platform is not without its shortcomings. Since day one, we've felt that, either due to an extremely rider-forward design or a simple geometric trade-off in the name of precision handling, all Rev XS sleds have suffered from heavy steering and overly nervous handling, especially on frozen or hard-packed surfaces. There will always be a trade-off, but once in a while, great minds come up with great ideas that can reduce the level of compromise for both sides. Enter Skidoo's new RAS2 front end. RAS stands for Response Angle Suspension, which is just a fancy acronym to describe a new 12 millimeter taller spindle that raises the outside end of an all new A-arm by the same amount. The result is even further reduced bump steer and a 38 millimeter taller roll center that's far closer to the actual center of gravity of the sled. This all adds up to a sled that stays straighter in the bumps, 
feels less nervous in a straight line, and, if you can believe it's possible, stays even flatter in the corners. Further benefits include increased strength, lighter weight, and ultra-premium style. But what about the downsides? What are the trade-offs with RAS2? There aren't any. When you start with the most precise handling sled in the world, improvements don't have to come with compromise. This doesn't necessarily mean this sled is now perfect. While dramatically improved, those heavier than we'd like steering and nervous handling traits are still present. This isn't a sled you can ride with one hand at 90 miles an hour, but it's definitely a big step in the right direction. A 137 by 1.5 lug ripsaw track provides more than enough traction for on and off trail riding, and standard XRS ergonomics and features like wider running boards, a tall narrow seat, Brembo brakes, and the ultimate in snowmobile suspension, KYB 40s, round out what we feel is the most civilized race replica package on the snow. At the end of the day, all the fancy bells and whistles don't mean squat if they don't combine to provide a stellar riding experience. So what's our opinion of this sled in the real world? Our opinion is simple, it rocks. It's less nervous than any Rev XS I've ever ridden. It's more versatile for all different kinds of riding. Its 137 inch R-Motion skid frame rides even better than its 120 inch counterpart. And your ego's gonna purr like a kitten thanks to its ultra manly good looks. In a world of lookalikes and posers, the Renegade XRS offers something few others do. Whether you're boondocking, riding through ditches or groomed trails, this sled delivers an overall riding experience that matches its premium price tag. We're always searching for snowmobile perfection. It's what we do. With each passing season come new ideas and new technology, but the search still continues. How did we miss this great idea? I have no idea. We just didn't know that we didn't know. But now we do, and we know it's good. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto, the unique world of equipment, tools, and more. In the snowmobile game, manufacturers are so closely matched that it comes down to the smallest of alterations season to season that truly raises the bar and helps make good snowmobiles even better. The Skidoo XS platform was met with much applause and acceptance from the snowmobiling world. The chassis sold incredibly well, and the R-Motion rear suspension has taken the world of suspension compliance to a whole new level, offering what all at Snowtracks agree is the best rear suspension in the industry. However, the XS chassis did have some minor drawbacks. The front suspension on the XS was not the problem itself. The pieces were good, however the geometry that was used was not as compliant as we knew it could be. The heavier than its competition steering on the XP and XS models was noticeable. And while the RAS front suspension did a great job of staying on the ground and cutting an aggressive line, it was just too heavy feeling at the bars. And the geometry, linked with the incredibly forward riding position and low center of gravity, made for inside ski lift and unpredictability in the steering the further you moved into the travel. But as with all minor problems on Skidoo snowmobiles, the product team and engineers in Valcor have an answer. The RAS2 front suspension looks very similar, however, there is very little that crosses over. Utilizing revised forgings and thin wall tubing, the front suspension was able to shed 1.76 pounds. The most noticeable visual alteration is the all-new CNC machine spindle that is able to completely change the front end geometry, allowing for incredible new handling characteristics. So you might be wondering just how much a little geometric change can make to the front end handling of a snowmobile. And let me tell you, this is one area where not inches, but millimeters make miles of differences. The upper ball joint has been raised by 12 millimeters or 0.47 of an inch. The net effect from this adjustment is minimizing camber change throughout the suspension's travel. This causes the skis to display minor toe out as the stroke increases, adding stability the further into the suspension travel you move. The second benefit is moving the roll center of the snowmobile closer to the center of gravity, which will display less body roll in aggressive corners and improve inside ski lift. The RAS2 front end is not just trail focused. It was designed to work better on the trail, but the mountain market will see integration of this new RAS2 front end. The 1.76 pound weight reduction is a huge benefit to the mountain rider for not only lowering weight, but also helping the front end respond quicker. 
Engineers were also able to increase the ground clearance on the RAS-2 equipped sleds by straightening the lower A-arm casting. When out in the powder, this will translate into 0.8 of an inch of increased clearance, helping riders avoid hidden objects under the powder. So this is great news for those who bought brand new 2015 sleds, but the even better news is for those who have XP, XS, and XM sleds from previous years, because this technology is backwards compatible. Skidoo is number one because they do things like this, making a full RAS2 update kit available for both 36 and 42 inch ski stances. This means if you're a trail or mountain rider, you can completely update your current XP, XS, or XM non-RAS2 sled. And the kit comes complete with all the goods, including the CNC spindle and a new set of black HPG threaded preload shocks, all for well under a grand in Canada and the US. While leaps and bounds are fun to make, the truth is, in our industry, there is often small, easy to overlook updates that really progress the snowmobile as we know it today. And for 2015, Skidoo has taken an already great snowmobile and made it, quite simply, better. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Terrain Domination. Arctic Cat, share our passion. And by Go Ride Ontario, yours to discover. If you like this video, post a comment and tell us what you think. Then click on this link to subscribe to Snowtracks TV here on the YouTube channel.